Good morning and welcome to worship with the Shared Lutheran Ministry of Fayette County. We are a shared ministry of four different Lutheran churches throughout Fayette County, Texas. And today we are recording from our church, St. John in Ellinger, Texas. Some announcements before we get started with worship. Um, later today we will be having Sunday school at our church in Reutersville. We will be looking at and talking about John the Baptist. Our next Wednesday evening Advent service this Wednesday will be at our church in Fayetteville, and that will start at 6 o'clock. And not this Sunday, but next Sunday, will Pastor Marsha will be starting a Zoom Bible study for the next two weeks looking at the five bold women in Jesus' genealogy. On this first Sunday of Advent, the first uh, Sunday in December, we are going to be celebrating communion in our worship service today. So please do get either the prepackaged communion set or get yourself some wine or juice and some bread or a cracker that you can celebrate communion at home. It's not going to be in your bulletin, but we did say that we would offer communion on the first Sunday of the month, and so we're going to be doing that today. You might have noticed that the setting has changed a little bit, and that's because I am the presider at communion, and we had our uh, Advent service this evening, so we're in our church in Ellinger in the Fellowship Hall, where they very graciously decorated things for us so that we could spread out a little more and be a little more safe in uh, these COVID days. For other announcements, you can check our Facebook page or our newsletter. We will begin this morning with the confession and the forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Awaken us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened by God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. On the second Sunday of Advent, we relight the candle of Eve. remembering that God made her and us a new creation. As we light the second candle, we remember Isaac, the long-awaited promised son of Abraham and Sarah. Isaac's life points to the faithfulness of God, who never forgets the promises made. Through Isaac, God fulfills the promise of creating a family of God through Abraham. Isaac was saved from being sacrificed, being the antithesis to Jesus, who was sacrificed for our redemption. The second candle is for fulfilled promise. <laughs> chapter 22. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had showed him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Mark chapter 15. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who, ba those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, 
Save yourself and come down the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him, and among themselves, and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma shabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion, who stood facing him, saw that in this way he breathed his last, He said, Truly this man was God's son. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The story of the binding of Isaac moves rather quickly. The way the story is told doesn't give us time to dwell on the feelings or the emotions of Isaac and Abraham as the knife flies through the air before God calls out to stop. We don't get to hear how the conversation up the mountain went. We don't know if Abraham hesitated before going on the journey and following God's command. We need to slow down and give closer attention to the few details this story offers so we can better understand what really happened. If we don't purposely slow down and read between the lines, we miss some of the important aspects of what this story has to say, not only about Isaac, but also about how Isaac can help us to better understand the person of Jesus. We cannot be certain exactly how old Isaac was when him and his father traveled to the land of Moriah, but he was not the small boy many of us might imagine when we think of this story. The land of Moriah was a three days journey from where Abraham and Isaac lived. And Abraham, even when Isaac was first born, was a man very advanced in age. Isaac needed to be old enough not only to care for himself on the long trek, but also to help offer care for his elderly father. Isaac must have also been old enough to carry the large bundle of wood needed for ritual sacrifice all the way up a mountain, something that was no easy task even for adult men. If you do the math with numbers we do have earlier in the text, we know that Isaac is somewhere between the ages of 5 and 36 but with his physical ability and the responsibility he was given to care for his father, Isaac was most definitely at least a healthy teenager, old enough and strong enough to care for and to protect himself. Isaac's age is important not only because it helps us get a better picture of what happened, but also because it makes us realize that Isaac was not an unsuspecting part of the binding, but rather he was a willing participant. Isaac would not have let himself be bound and put on the tops of logs of wood without either asking questions or just simply putting the pieces together of what was happening. If he had done this, he easily could have resisted or overpowered his elderly father or simply just run away. Isaac would have known what was happening, and he would have had ample time to respond. 
Isaac let himself be bound and consented to what his father Abraham was going to have to do. For a brief moment, Isaac, like Jesus, was a willing sacrifice. Both father and son were prepared to offer up everything to God in faithful obedience. Neither knew what exactly was going to happen next or why, but they had faith. They trusted in a plan unknown to themselves. They trusted in what God knew rather in what they themselves could understand. They put control of their lives into God's hands. Abraham offered up his only son, the person who stood as the sign and fulfillment of God's covenant with Abraham to make a great nation from his line. He was prepared to lose the one tangible part of God's promise to him. He was prepared to lose the one thing that made God's promise and covenant seem and feel real and achievable. Abraham was willing to sacrifice the one thing that offered him stability and confidence in what God was doing in his life in exchange for the unknown of what God was calling him into in the present moment. Isaac offered up his very self. Isaac was the son of Abraham's promise and therefore was also giving up the promise of his father's great nation coming from his line, from his own offshoot. Isaac knew he had a special place in God's eyes and that God's promise would work through him and his life, but he did not see how that could happen in a situation such as this. Isaac was faced with a situation where he was required to have faith in the face of a God who did not seem to be acting faithfully to his own promises. What was at stake for Isaac was his own life and everything that represented. Isaac was faced with the possibility of saving his own life. He could have easily overpowered his father and moved on with his own life, He had the power to save his life within his hands, and he chose not to. He put his life into the hands of God instead. In Advent waiting, Isaac journeyed up the mountain and let himself be bound, and waited expectantly for what God was creating, doing, and making possible. In Advent waiting, Isaac looked beyond the apparent and into the person of God, wondering and trusting what new thing God might be creating. Isaac let go of his own future and put it in the hands of someone who could better care for it. He let God order his life and do whatever great thing he had in store for him. Isaac let himself be part of the promise God was fulfilling. Isaac's willingness to be a willing sacrifice And to serve someone greater than himself is very much like the story of a young boy willing to sacrifice for his twin sister. I read the story as told from the perspective of a doctor somewhere on social media. The doctor tells the story like this. Today I operated on a little girl. She needed O negative blood. We didn't have any, but her twin brother had O-negative blood. I explained to him that it was a matter of life and death. He sat quietly for a moment and then said goodbye to his parents. I didn't think anything of it until after we took his blood and then he asked, So, when do I die? He thought he was giving his life for hers. Thankfully, they're both fine. So it was with Isaac's own willing sacrifice. Ultimately, although Isaac offered up himself, God provided another sacrifice. God provided a ram for Isaac and Abraham. For all of humanity, God offered his own son. In the person of Jesus, God offered the perfect sacrifice. Jesus, too, in his own life, had the possibility 
in the moment right before death to save himself and to secure his own life. Jesus, in his great and mysterious power, could have simply come down from the cross or convinced his executioners to let him go. Jesus had the power to do exactly what the, cry, what the crowds were yelling at him, telling him to do, save himself and show his power, that he truly was the Messiah. But on the cross, Jesus, like Isaac, chose to let what was happening happen. Jesus faithfully trusted God's working. Jesus cried out, Eloi, Eloi, lemma shabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But he still remained. Jesus gave his life for something greater. Jesus gave his life for the unknowable new thing God was doing in the world. Jesus gave his life, and God did what no one could have imagined. God tore the curtain of the temple in two and fully embraced the whole of humanity. The whole of humanity, including all of its sin and hurt and suffering. Both Isaac and Jesus, as well as the young boy who gave his blood for his sister, exhibited a great power that is not always easy to see. In staying in the position of sacrifice, they all trusted something bigger than themselves. They put what was at stake above their own needs and above even their own self. This is the type of strength we are called to. The strength of putting God's mission above ourselves and that which we can imagine. This strength is the strength of Advent waiting, of preparing for what we cannot imagine by faith and moving forward in line with God's mission, even when we do not know the way or even when the way seems uncertain or wrong. When it comes down to it, it boils down to a simple question. Whose hands do you want to put your life into? Whose hands would you feel more comfortable guiding and determining your future? Whose hands do you want to give control and worry to? Your own or God's? Please pray with me. Holy God. In the person of Isaac, you show us what faithfulness looks like during times that feel like life or death. Give us the wisdom to leave our livelihood in your hands too. In the person of Jesus, you showed us the lengths you went to bring us back into your loving embrace. Give us the patience we need as we wait for the life you have promised. In the joys and trials of life, you show us new ways that you are working in our lives and in your world. Give us the faith to trust you in your promises and to place our hope in you, no matter how hopeless circumstances may seem. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, we pray. Amen.
our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we enter a time of offering, and I would like to thank you for your continued financial support of our shared ministry as well as the ministry of each of our four churches as well. Thank you also for the ways in which you have served one another in this community by prayer or by acts of service or by other financial gifts as well. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us repeatedly that your promises are true. You have fulfilled them through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and ultimately through our Lord Jesus. Teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Send replenishing rain to our thirsty land. Fill our ponds once again. Restore the balance of nature so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth and to offer opportunities for all people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Take care of children removed from their birth parents and sustain those who care for them. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Tender God. You know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. 
comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression. And gather all people into your healing embrace. We pray especially for Loretta, Debbie, Mel, Donna, Jennifer, Ed, Kim, Angie, Gerald, Billy, Nikki, Sheila, Dewey, Iris, Dennis, Willie, Lillian, Linda, Ted, Art, Shelby, Ivy, Thomas, and Donna. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The congregation may offer prayers aloud or silently at this time. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your life. When the earth was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and the psalmist cried out for healing. And full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor, he lived under oppression, he wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O God, you are breath. Send your spirit on this meal. O God, you are bread. Feed us with yourself. O God, you are wine. Warm our hearts and make us one. O God, you are fire, transform us with hope. O God, most majestic, O God, most motherly, O God, our strength and our song, you show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat, and drink. And so if you would at this time, if you haven't already opened your elements, make sure they're open. The body and blood of Christ given and shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey. Now and forever. God.